Hey guys, Corey from Aquarium Co-op today, and uh, it's another day in the fish room. So let's see what I've gotten done. Kind of worked some nights after after work, little projects, and I'll just show those off, and then we'll go from there. So I finally got my air pump installed. Well, a new one. This is from Gemco. It's the LPH80, and it's the linear air piston pump. Very very quiet. Um, if I was to plug in the blower, you'd only hear like a vacuum cleaner sound, so uh, yeah, now I've got the backup here, also doubles the backup for the store, a little quieter in here. You can still hear the bubbles and some things like that, but um, you know, in time, I'll work on that as well. Uh, I was able to get the last two tanks plumbed in, so we've got a little bit of water in there. We've got the auto water change system plumbed in as well. Uh, unfortunately though, I have a leak, like the tiniest little leak in this joint, and it's, you know, like a drip per two minutes or something like that, but uh, I've put some more glue on here, which, you know, it's not a recommended thing, but this is a low pressure system, it's trying to stop this leak, and if I can't get it to stop, well then I'm going to have to cut everything out, and that's going to be a real pain because I'd have to cut as close as I can here, which is probably about there. And then I would also have to cut either here or way up here, which means I have to cut down here. And so because the leak is at such a tight spot, I end up having to cut out a lot of things to fix this one little leak. So I'm going to see if I can't just put a little glue on there to fix that. If I can't do that, then I might try some of the fiberglass tape they use to fix a leak. I've never used that before, but... Um, I'm trying to be lazy here and not have to cut here and here up above and up here and over here. So it's like four joints. You know, to fix one little joint, I might have to replace four joints, and that's that's just not fun. But we've got the table cleared off here, which that's a good thing. When you guys see a cleared off table like this, it means I got a project I'm going to shoot. And uh, so yeah, I'm going to shoot a project probably on how to do some kind of uh, breeding pots so that you put plants in them and uh, you feed them with root tabs, stuff like that. It makes it really easy for breeder tanks. Um, you know, shot a video on the auto, not auto water changer, but float valve. Uh, so that's why this tank's full. 40 gallon breeder here on the end. I noticed last night for whatever reason, I haven't put a sponge filter in it, so if I have one of those laying around today, I'm going to tackle that. If I don't, I need to bring one home from the store. Um, still need to scrub algae. I need to, I need to rinse lots of gravel today. Uh, that's, I want gravel, at least some, or crushed coral in these tanks to buffer up my pH. Got lots of goldfish just kind of hanging out. Blackmore here. Um, one, because I like goldfish, and two, give them a good home and I'm going to feed them up and stuff like that. I'm probably going to install some auto fish feeders today. Um, we've got the fry here that I shot a video on how to remove fry from African cichlid's mouth. You see one of the eggs there fungused up and I'm just leaving it for comparison in the videos, but um, yeah, they're getting closer and closer to hatching here, so that's a good thing. And that's just a little makeshift tumbler there, obviously. I got some red Russian, not red Russian, uh, red Delta Guppy Fry in that I ordered off Aquabid. And uh, let's see if I can get, you know, they're not fully colored up or large by any means. Uh, but, you know, they're starting, starting a new strain for me. Got them in here with some Claro Plecos. I was hoping they would bring the Claro Plecos out a little bit, not so much. I put an elbow in this tank just to raise the water le level up a little bit. I might do that in other tanks as well. So otherwise the water level kind of stays at this height, which I'm okay with. Um, you know, these aren't show tanks by any means, but uh, more water uh, is kind of a good thing. You know, just in general makes it better. Put a bunch of hornwort in the turtle tank for them to eat. So that's kind of just a snack for them. But yeah, time for me to get started working today. And uh, I'll try them in as I think things are worth looking at. Well, I got about 50 minutes of work done before I've got called into work. I gotta go 
uh, be there for a little bit, at least so someone can run and check on uh, some things at home, kind of a family emergency. So uh, I'll show you what I got done real quick. I shot a video. That's the aftermath of the dirty table there. Uh, and then I also drilled a hole through to the wall here. That's kind of a next project to get some water going to the other room. And so, yeah, so for now, I've got to go to work. And if I get back in time, I'll keep working in the fish room. So we'll talk to you later. This might be the end, maybe not. We'll have to see. So it's 5.45, I'm back from the shop and back to working on my fish room. Let's see what we got done here in the last 10 minutes or so. I installed, or at least got that hole drilled all the way through this wall. So now I've got a hose I can run through. And it's going to a sump pump. And this is a 360 gallon uh, koi pond. And I use it for quarantine when the koi season's on. When it's not the koi season, uh, we're growing them out for next next season. And so doing a water change, we've got lots of filtration here, lots of uh, wet dry filters. But doing the water change, we can see how that's going on the other side here. This is a cold room. Being louder in here. Lots of water flowing in here. So at the moment I'm filling up the uh, water change tank for all the, the system here in this room. And then we've got the water flowing uh, into here. It's, it's pretty quick because the pump's 3,000 gallons per hour, but uh, because we're restricting it into a 5 8 hose, it's slowed down obviously. Uh, I grabbed a heater from the shop. This is just, uh, I'm running it on low. And I just want to get the temperature up a little bit in here while I'm waiting to install more things that use power. Uh, it's, you know, staying around 74, I want it a little bit warmer in here. So, uh, brought that in. What else have I got? I got a sponge filter installed in this tank. I was able to pick that up while I was at the store. Uh, so that, you know, that's one more thing that's done. Um, now, I think, I think it's time for me to do some planning. I need to start planning uh, right behind me there. I need to start planning where that stuff's gonna move and uh, the next row of tanks, that type of thing. And so I'll probably spend some time with pen and paper maybe and work on that or at least move some blocks in here and see how that goes. Um, but yeah, 545, still working in the fish room. We'll see what else we can get accomplished today. Well, it's about seven o'clock now. And it probably doesn't look like I got much done, but let me tell you, moving blocks around and figuring out how I'm gonna do some things, you can waste a lot of time planning, let me tell you. You know, scratch paper, lots of clumps going into the recycle bin. Uh, but I think I've got the plan laid out. Now I'm gonna see if I can make it a bit easier. It's probably where I'm stopping for the night, but let me show you what I've got done in the past, I don't even know how long it's been, uh, since I checked in last. So I got a glass top installed on the 40 breeder, put in a Phoenix light. So now we've got this lit up. Finished the water change over in the cold water room. Uh, I installed some auto fish feeders. Got one here on the new uh, Delta Red Guppies I got. Also installed one up here on the Liberty Mollies. A lot of people want those, so better be feeding well and getting them breeding. Uh, so yeah, two feeders, got a glass top installed, got the sponge filter installed earlier, got the light installed. Got my layout for the next row. So I've measured it, we're three feet from this row here to here. Uh, this spacing currently will allow a 40 breeder to sit uh, in between the pillars once I make them go vertical. And now my goal is either A, I gotta do a little bit of of uh, thinking here. And it's because these blocks are 15 and a half inches wide and a 40 breeder that we have right here is 18 inches wide. And so I only want to use one block. And so I'm thinking uh, on each edge having some stick out a bit and using like, uh, let's say two by eight. So there's still, you know, let's say 
an inch and a half and an inch and a half or two inches and two inches on each side there but six of the inches are in locked into the blocks and uh, I'm also thinking that if I can buy 12 foot runs I'm just going to do that because that I can extend this run a little bit which right now it's about 11 feet I could include a little more wiggle room between each bay and then there's no cutting required and I get to make another video on how to make a, a rack of 40 breeders with no cuts required and uh, then I have full pieces of lumber I could use them in a different project later down the road if I decide I hate this which I don't think I will but um, yeah so that's where I ended up tonight uh, you know owning a fish store sometimes you don't get to do as much work as you want on the fish room you get called in stuff like that but um, if you enjoyed it give us a like if you have any questions throw some questions out there I'll answer them it's more content for me to film which I enjoy so um, yeah, and we'll see you in the next video.